Hey everyone, Chris here. I uh, just wanted to check in and show you all a, a great pickup that I was really excited to get, something I kind of stumbled upon on eBay while I was just kind of looking around. It's, it's something that I've always kind of hoped to find and I actually found it recently. But before I show you that, I kind of wanted to do a little bit of a flashback to one of my one of my first videos I had shown these two cards. This is from the T 218 set and some of you may remember maybe not but this card was owned by Jefferson Burdick at one time it has his stamp on the back and then I had another card also that was owned by Burdick and has his stamp on the back uh, Jefferson Burdick was considered he's considered the father of modern card collecting He's mainly responsible for all the cataloging, um, just the, the early organization of the hobby. He was born in 1900 and started collecting cards in 1910. And then at some point in the 1930s, he started kind of reaching out to, to different magazines and, and different uh, publications and things like that and writing letters to people where he was really trying to organize the hobby and and try to bring collectors together who were a lot like him and collected the same things that he collected and um, you know he this was kind of his passion and in 1935 he contacted the publisher of a magazine called Hobbies and he asked if he could write a, a an article about card collecting. What I was fortunate enough to be able to find was this Hobbies magazine dated June 1938. This was actually the last Hobbies magazine that Jefferson Burdick wrote an article for. His, his articles spanned from uh, sometime in 1935 until 1938. And in 1937, he had actually started his own publication called the Card Collector's Bulletin. And then later in 1939, he created the American Card Catalog. So this was the last article that he did for Hobbies Magazine. If you turn to page 118, this is where you have Jefferson Burdick's article that he wrote for, for this particular issue. Uh, so I'm going to go ahead and read this. It's pretty short. It's not too long because I just want to give you kind of an idea of, of where his heart was and, and what he felt about the hobby and how he was actually trying to promote the hobby. So his article reads like this about the first disappointment of those who become interested in old cigarette cards is that they are unable to find a sufficient quantity to collect. It is true that there are no large floating stocks available. As to the tobacco issues, these are practically a closed collection. So far as known, there are no current issues and only a few sets have appeared since 1915. Many of the old collections have changed hands or are stored away and forgotten. In consequence, collecting them today presents a much different problem than collecting a line which has a continual flow of new issues and has specialized dealers to distribute them. There are one or two dealers who carry a stock of cards, but collectors should consider every dealer in curios, prints, and old books as a card dealer. I believe the vast majority of hobby dealers carry more than one line, just as most collectors have two or more interests. A stamp dealer within the past couple of years has branched out into courier and knives, old books, and cards, among other things. A book dealer in South Carolina and another in Salt Lake City in Salt Lake City have found several of the old printed card albums and a dealer in old prints up in Maine dug up some of the fine old cards. Every month, Hobbies contains descriptions of the collections of various sorts for which there are no specific dealers. Going after such things means a long search, national and local advertising, contacts with other collectors, and sources of supply, a study, and some little patience. It also involves some expense, as is everything at all worthwhile, although cards are not costly when compared with many hobbies. Such a card collecting program should result in a well-rounded collection within a few years. 
but not a complete collection, for completeness is too much to hope for with many of the older series. After a time, editions become fewer and farther between, but all the more enjoyed, and that is real collecting. Cards are a sideline to most collectors, but many admit a stronger fondness for them than for the main hobby, which probably takes the bulk of the spare cash. The feeling is strengthened by the difficulties of their accumulation and by the contacts and studies of them among collectors. They are a type of Americana and share in the love which all Americans have for the relics and remains of years gone by. There is no interesting series in card classifications than the baseball series of which the accompanying illustration is representative. Baseball fans, here is a history by the old cigarette cards. Here Burdick shows off some of his cards. Uh, they're all from the old Judge set from the 1880s. A couple of the things that I found interesting about this article that he wrote. One was the fact that at the time in 1938, he considered there to be only one or two people that were even, even selling cards. And number two, he also mentions that it's not a very expensive hobby. My, how things have changed. Uh, I hope you enjoyed this. Um, I was really excited to find this and add this to my collection. I love the hobby history. And Jefferson Burdick is one of those people that anytime I think you can pick up something that, that has to do with him, it's always a good idea. Take care and we'll see you next time.